We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews and, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs and bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello and welcome to Sorted. It is just two days until Christmas, so we've got some potentially pretentious festive ingredients to get us in the mood. And first up is our fabulous <laughs> chef and friend, Ben, who is well known for his festive cheer and strange Christmas traditions. All right, Abbas, give it a lift. Okay. I mean, do you know what these are? They're something with a stalk, like a cherry. Have a bite. What's in it? Wow. <laughs> I mean, I know liqueur chocolates are a thing, but normally it's liqueur flavoured. It's not normally a shot of liqueur inside a chocolate capsule. I, it, oh, yeah, it's got a warmth to it that is lovely. And I didn't even get to the cherry, but it's a cherry liqueur. Oh, the cherry's not been pitted. Nope, there are, yep, sorry. They are whole cherries, so there are stones <laughs> in there, Ebbers. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Oh! <laughs> Without the surprise element, you both did better on the eating. Oh, that, <laughs> that is fantastic. I, my breath feels so warm. Ebbers, these are sarisettes, handcrafted using whole cherries that have been steeped in rich brandy and generously dipped in Belgian dark chocolate. The cherries are infused in the liquor within 24 hours of picking to ensure the highest quality and freshness of flavour. Pretentiousness. We've covered this a lot. Between sort of pretentious, premium, unnecessary, superfluous, novelty, and where in that bracket does it sit? I think a lot of the pretense often comes with also how they're packaged and marketed. You say they come as nine. It's a nice little, quite exquisite gift. The fact that these have the, the stalk, they kind of are a bit more of an, of an experience. I think you'd probably warn people so the experience was pleasant. Um, I think mine was sticky, but it was really yummy. You can get Sarasets from lots of different places, from mass-produced places to higher-end artisanal chocolatiers. I think something like that only has a place around the festive holidays, but do you know what? If there was one of those in a little paper case set out at like a Christmas market, which I feel like I've missed this year, mm. I, you'd grab one as you walk past. So worth stealing is what you're saying. Yeah. They're not stealing. <laughs> 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 I would accept. <laughs> Good enough to gift or great if you're hosting. Gotcha. Wouldn't buy them for myself. Do you want to take a guess at how much these cost? Nine in a box, two pound a pop, 18 quid. Then I go, it's actually quite a lot. Uh, so I'll take a bit off and I'll end up at 16 pounds they are £19.95. That does take into consideration high-end department store in London tax. But they work out at £2.21 per Cerisset. Pretentious or not, and what are your thoughts? It's still a little expensive. I don't think it's pretentious. I think it's exquisite. Spaff, give us a lift. Ooh. It's not gold bullion. I was going to say, are they stock cubes? <laughs> What do they feel like? They feel semi-hard, a little bit squishy. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Any idea what it is? Or have you seen one of these before? It looks like a brain. It's either a nut, like it's been soaked in a sugar syrup for a year, or it's a fruit that's had something similar done to it. Give, give it a taste. Let us know what it tastes like. You will know what it is, but whether you can pinpoint it, it's tough. It's sweet, chewy, and I'm sure that flavour is familiar and I'm trying to pinpoint it. I feel like it's something f like Japanese that we've had. Like it's got the red bean, you know those red bean bun type things that we, we had? That's what it is, it's that, it's that kind of texture and flavour. Mate, these are a 16th century French speciality. <laughs> but what you're, you're getting... A, you're a knob. No, 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 I hear you. <laughs> these are marron glass. They use the very best sweet, chestnuts. They pick the chestnuts and leave them in a cellar to dry for three weeks. They candy them for seven to ten days using a traditional French recipe and then chuck them in the oven for a few minutes and it 
glazes them and sets them, making the chestnut retain all of that syrup that it's taken on and you are left with these. I mean, that is a long thing to say and process to make, I imagine. And you're getting that same consistency of a chestnut once it's cooked than you would of something like a red bean paste. So from a yeah. texture point of view like a and, a, yeah. and a pulsy kind of, although it is a nut, when it's cooked, it has that creamy, nutty, pulsiness to it. Should we try one, Evers? I would love to try one. Cheers. I love these. Mmm. Really good, right? They are. They are sublime. Absolutely delicious. I love them. And so Japanese in texture and taste. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was such a hypocrite earlier. And I was such a <laughs> about it. But that is exactly how I describe it. It is, isn't it? Do you see these as something that you would gift to someone? Or do you think you'd buy them when you're having people around? The problem is, when you gift them, or if you had them and you brought them out when you had people there, you're gonna have to explain what they are. And then in that themselves, does that make them pretentious? At that moment, <laughs> you become pretentious. But they aren't pretentious. I don't you know. I don't know or, whether, as soon as you stand there and explain that, well, rather than mince pies, I thought we all might enjoy- Stop, 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 stop. How would you really say it? As well as mince pies. No, no. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> and I think that's because of our circumstances. Whereas in many parts of the world, these might be a regular thing at Christmas, as you said. I don't think these are pretentious. These are something that families have in France and they enjoy and have enjoyed for centuries. Um, would you like to guess the price for a box of 18? <laughs> now, considering that they have been shipped over, hand-picked. Stored carefully in a bolster wood box. Yeah, they've also got high-end London department store tax and Christmas tax. I wouldn't say I pay this, but are they 40 pounds? They are 62 pounds for the box. Now, I am sure that you can get them cheaper, especially on location. So I'm gonna ask the question, pretentious or not? The product in itself is not pretentious. It's a, it's a tradition, it's delicious. I can't get my head around the price, but if somebody bought them for me, I'd be very happy. Number three, Ebers. This is very interesting for me because I know that you'll look at this and go, I could make my own. Could you make something that tastes this good? That's, oh, that's my nice question. Sure. Peanut, spiced, a rather dark caramel, so possibly even some of the bitter caramel as opposed to just sickly sweet, um, like a caramel snap. It looks very dark, but I'm guessing that might actually come from the spices rather than just the caramel. Following in the footsteps of Cronuts, Duffins, Cruffins, comes Harvey Nichols's festive Nutty Brittle. Lovingly mixed and stretched by hand, this is classic nut brittle meets Speculoos, everyone's favourite spiced Christmas biscuit. Do you know what Speculoos is? I love that. It's a, a, a wonderful kind of spiced, again, I associate it with Christmas biscuit. Cloves, cinnamon, allspice, those types of flavours. Are you getting those? Delicious. For me, it's all the same flavours you'd find in eggnog, pumpkin pie and kind of pumpkin spice lattes, um, Lebkuchen and kind of Stollen and all of those wonderful Christmassy baked goods. Uh, uh, you can have one. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that is awesome. Mm, that is so Christmassy. What's also cool about this is that all of the confectionery for Harvey Nichols, which is a London department store, are provided by the same company, Fudge Kitchen. And for decades, they've been one of the UK's unsung confectionery heroes, using some recipes that date back to the 1800s. How much do you think it is? £5.50. Oh, Ebba's close, £6.95. And to be perfectly honest, it's fantastic. And I would probably be happy buying that. Isn't it weird though? Would you have paid £6.95? if you hadn't have tasted it first? No. Mm. As, as with many of these things, yeah. sometimes the cost isn't worth the risk, but now knowing that it isn't a risk, it's almost worth the cost in some cases. But isn't so much of what we've looked at today the extreme mm. for Christmas, which is the artisanal, the hand-selected, the handmade and the traditional, which is the counter to the mountainous stacked high tubs of mixed chocolates you get in supermarkets, two for a fiver. We love that at Christmas, and we probably all do that at Christmas. Mm -hmm. 
and that's at one end, but Christmas also allows you to celebrate the traditions and to spend a little bit more on the things that perhaps isn't a regular treat. No. The... But at Christmas, you can celebrate those two extreme ends Simultaneously. of confectionery. I don't think it's pretentious. I don't think it's every day. So I think it is quite exclusive special occasion. Get in the hot seat because you're about to have a delicious time. Ooh! Jay, have a spin around. Oh! Wow! That is a bird. <laughs> it absolutely is a bird. I can't tell you what bird that is stroke was. So on top, we've got a date syrup and five spice glaze okay at the point when it was sort of roasted and that's what's giving it that wonderful bronzed effect is it a turkey it's a very small turkey <laughs> so it's a small turkey a long chicken <laughs> a goose yes <laughs> so this is from coombe farm and they say that we think the good old-fashioned goose is a much underappreciated bird once upon a time every small holding would have kept goose to do duty both as a guard bird because they can be quite noisy and as Christmas dinner. Because of the riches of their meat and the amount of fat they carry, geese never made it as commercial poultry. So you as a family have had goose before? Yes. I didn't think of it as like, oh, I thought of it very much as, well, this is what people did in the Victorian era. Interesting. Again, very traditional. Very traditional. Well, obviously, have a carve, have a taste. Excellent. How do you carve a goose? Let's find out together. <laughs> Very similar to a chicken and a turkey in the sense that it has the same kind of anatomy, they're just different shapes. The parts are in the same place. Or, if it's something like a duck or a goose, you can just quarter it. Go on, Spaff. You can do it, mate. You can do it. Often easier if you take the leg off first because you've got more of a, a runway at it, but it's up to you. Same as the chicken, cut down the loose bit, ball and socket joint, pop it out. How's it going for you? These geese are made really tough. <laughs> you know you think you might have a fight with one? Don't. <laughs> Oh, nice, 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 nice. I'd like some jus, please. Just a little teaspoon. Just on the, just on the side, so we can yeah, taste I'm the Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the side, I'm gonna put it on the side. Oh, you're going in with forks. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, wow. Mm. That is fantastic. I don't think I've ever had goose before. It's super rich and it's not fatty, but it's got a, like a yeah. richness to it that's yeah. almost gamey. Yeah. But it's not gamey. It's a different kind of, of note to it. Goose is outstanding. Goose is great. It's really similar to duck in that respect, to that mm. duck breast. Okay, so goose as a whole, not at all pretentious for either of you when we unveiled this. No, not pretentious, but just old school and not front of mind for what I would think to cook for Christmas dinner in the 21st century. The tradition of roast goose goes even back to ancient Greeks and Romans who used to have them at festivals. It's actually said that geese were plentiful and cheaper than the exotic turkey native to the New World, um, so made the best choice for the holiday table. So often turkey is overcooked and becomes dry, whereas a duck or a goose, you've got a bit more leniency on the time because it is a richer, slightly fattier, darker meat. They're more difficult to get hold of. They are less available in our regular places and wide scale farmed. So that probably comes at a cost, but actually if you have one, I imagine it's easier, it's definitely tastier. You get better fat off of it, which enables you to make better roast potatoes. There's a lot going for goose at the Christmas table. Would you like to guess how much this 4.5 kilogram goose, which serves six to eight people, cost? Bearing in mind, it's from a really good farm and it's organic. I'm going to say 70 pounds. This goose actually costs 94 pounds 95. Really? Yep. So as a comparison, Dalesford Farm, another organic farm that we've used in the past, we, we got last year's turkey from there. They do a four and a half kilo turkey crown, organic, and that cost 110 pounds. It is a lot of money, but as the centerpiece of your Christmas meal and experience, considering everything else actually as part of a Christmas meal, is cheap. It's all vegetables and things like that. Well, the question is, Jay, goose, pretentious or not? It's not. It's a big duck. <laughs> <laughs> well, over to you guys. 
Do you think any of those ingredients were number one, pretentious? Number two, do you eat any of those regularly and can tell us a little bit more about it? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment down below. And from everyone here at Sorted, whatever you have in the centrepiece of your Christmas table, we wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. St. Nicholas is off his moves on festive cheer right now because he's just seen that he can gift Sorted Food membership in three, six and 12 month bundles. He's already been bossing his midweek meals with the Meal Packs app, and he loves the recipes in all the cookbooks. And that jolly funster is losing his eggnog over the Feast Your Ears podcasts. So now he can spread the same levels of Christmas joy to all his foodie friends. But he does need to stop requesting reindeer recipes. It goes without saying that we're not consuming all of these things, are we? Well, we are, but we're doing it on behalf of you. <laughs> You've so, even got yeah. it on your jumper. Have I? <laughs> No, you sugar on your jump. No one. Some candy canes. Got sugar one. candy canes. Oh! It was, yeah, it was. Should I lift the cloche? <laughs> <laughs> How much brandy was in those chocolates? Just, 